Greetings, dear listeners. Hope you're all doing well. And welcome to a quick and dirty mini review of H.P. Lovecraft, He Who Wrote in the Darkness, a graphic biography. Now, I initially picked this book up just to use as a prop for my Cthulhu Christmas picture, and I didn't intend to read it. But once I stuck my nose in it, I just couldn't put it down. It's excellent, four and a half to five stars, and I knew I'd have to tell you about it on the channel. So, this morning I'm going to be referring to my notes, so I don't start horror babbling, if uh, you saw what I did there. Horror Babble is one of my favorite YouTube channels, even though they start each video with the phrase, you fool, Warren is dead. To which I answer, no, I'm not. I'm right here. I don't actually take any offense because that phrase is the last line in the H.P. Lovecraft story, the statement of Randolph Carter. You fool, Warren is dead. Now, this book, H.P. Lovecraft, He Who Wrote in the Darkness, presents four scenes from the life of Lovecraft, each of which illuminates aspects of his character as, in the words of writer David Camus from the introduction, a happy melancholic. Much of the dialogue is taken from Lovecraft's stories or letters. So section one is The Red Knights of Red Hook, which covers the period when Lovecraft wrote the horror at Red Hook, and left a hated Brooklyn for his beloved Providence. It also documents the end of Lovecraft's marriage to Sonia Green and his anti-Semitism, which is a paradox as Sonia and his close friend Samuel Loveman, who gets him a job, are both Jewish. Section 2, The Call of the Indescribable, of the Indescribable, covers the period when he wrote The Call of Cthulhu, which was initially rejected for weird tales by editor Farnsworth Wright, who found it too slow and obscure. <laughs> it also covers his friendship with escape artist Harry Houdini, for whom he had ghostwritten Imprisoned with the Pharaohs. In this account, Houdini proposes that he and Lovecraft collaborate on an expose of the supernatural, a project that ends when Houdini receives a blow to the stomach, which causes peritonitis and his death at 52. Now, in this book, the stomach punch is presented as a violent assault, but that's not exactly what happened. So I put a few links to accounts of Houdini's death in the description, if you're curious and want to find out more. And I don't really know if Houdini and Lovecraft did plan to collaborate on an expose of the supernatural. I'm going to have to do more research and maybe read a full-length biography of Lovecraft to find that out. Section 3. In the Abyss of Memory, sees Lovecraft on the road, visiting a farm in Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Massa, well, you know what I mean, you visiting a farm in Massachusetts, which inspires the Dunwich Horror, as well as visiting some caves in the Shen Shenandoah Valley. <laughs> and you know Lovecraft and his love of caves. He was the original underground artist. Before he returns to Providence to pen at the Mountains of Madness, Section 4, The Lonely Mountain, has Lovecraft visiting New Orleans, where his horror of seafood is revealed. So I guess now we know where Dagon and some of those other stories came from. His travels to Florida to visit Robert Barlow, who he is surprised to find is only 16 years old, learning of the suicide of Robert E. Howard and Lovecraft's own death from cancer. Now, this is important, so I'm really going to concentrate on reading this part here. Lovecraft appears in almost every cartoon frame, 
so I got a real sense of his presence. Howard was a man after my own heart, as he liked to sit at his desk and write all night. <laughs> well, I like to sit here and surf the net all night. Uh, it was 4 a.m. before I went to bed last night. Uh, the artwork is in pale, muted twilight colors. Black, blue, browns, gray, and a pale pastel green for Sonia's blouse, which, given her name, is rather appropriate. I highly recommend this graphic bio, which has me interested in reading a full-length biography of H.P. Lovecraft. So if anyone can suggest one, please tell me about it in the comments below. I actually do have a biography of Lovecraft, the appropriately titled Lovecraft, a biography by the science fiction writer L. Sprague de Camp, which I read about 40 years ago, 1977, 1978. So I have no memory of it. So if anybody can suggest a more recent biography, please tell me about it in the comments below. And the author and the illustrator, let me read from the back. The author is Alex Nikolovich. Alex Nikolovich. Alex Nikolovich has published multiple books, both fantasy and historical, for a number of French publisher, publishers. He lives in France. And the artwork is by Gervasio, Aon, and Lee. Gervasio, Aon, and Lee are a team of artists with multiple graphic novels published in their home country of Argentina. And here's a picture on the back of Lovecraft on his travels. And as you can see, they, you can see their use of muted colors there. Muted colors. Blues, browns, blacks. So again, the book is called H.P. Lovecraft, He Who Wrote in the Darkness, and I highly recommend it. It looks like this team has also done adaptations of some works by Albert Camus, which I plan to check out as well. So, thanks for listening. I hope this uh, review didn't uh, descend into a crawling chaos. And Merry Christmas and Cthulhu Fatagan. Must be getting close to...